unconditionally. There are things that you want from us. There are things that you desire from us. It's things you desire from our heart. And so today, Father, as we begin to go into the subject of waiting, uh, the practice of waiting on you in prayer, there's a song that you put on my heart that we should listen to before we uh, go into that session, uh, which will be recorded. And so, Father, we just pray that the Holy Spirit would minister to us through this song.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we glorify your name. We magnify you. We lift you up. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you dominion, power, and majesty because they belong to you. Father, we thank you for this new series, the practice of waiting on God in prayer. Psalm 62, one says, for God alone, my soul wakes in silence. From him comes my salvation. And Father, that is a principle that we must in this time really lay hold to, that our salvation comes from you alone, does not come from government, does not come from family, does not come from friends, you are the one alone who de determines what you want to do in any given situation and who you want to use in any given situation. And so, Father, we pray that even as we start on this series, 
that God, our soul would truly begin to know that its salvation comes from you. We thank you for the song we played before this series from uh, Cody Carnes, Nothing Else. Nothing else will do. Father, you're asking for us to get our hearts back into a posture where we wait on you and know that you are our salvation, not you plus, not you and uh, something we've concocted in our own imagination, not you breathing on our plans, but us waiting on you, seeking your face, waiting to hear what you are saying to us. Father, we pray that as we begin to practice this, we will begin to hear your voice with crystal clear clarity. For Father, you have desire for all of your people to be prophetic, to know your voice. Many people relegated to the prophets, but even Moses had a vision. He said, although I, I wish that all people were prophets, that they would know his voice, hear his voice. And in the New Testament, that is accomplished through the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit who makes the voice of God available to every believer. And even as every believer goes out, they can hear the voice of the Lord for even unbelievers and begin to bring them into the presence of God. And so, Father, we thank you. The Lord, even as we internalize these truths, you're going to cause us to hear you in a new, in a clearer, in a better way. And Holy Spirit, we pray for you to breathe upon this message. We ask for angels of your presence to be present with us as we go through this message. We pray that you would give us utterance that the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ Jesus would be strong upon these messages because it is the revelation of you, Jesus Christ, that we desire. For upon this rock of revelation of who I am, I will build my church. And as he builds the church, he builds his believers who are in the church because you've called us to be a holy tabernacle, a spiritual house unto you. And so, Father, we pray that we will begin to put you first place in our hearts and in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So we have started a new series called The Practice of Waiting on God in Prayer. And we're going to begin to probably do 20 to 30 minute segments before we start our service, because we really want people to get back into the practice of waiting on God. Waiting on God is probably one of the hardest things for flesh to do, because even when we begin to wait on God, everything that we forgot to do, everything that we want to do, everything comes up in our, our viewpoint. And we always make an excuse that that thing is more important than being still before God. And God wants to begin to teach us again to be still and to know that I am God, that I know your prayer request. I know what you have need of, but sometimes I want to give my agenda to you. As you wait on me, I prioritize what is important because what is important to you may not be what's important to me. But if we dialogue and you listen and you hear my voice, you will know what is most important, even in your own life. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. Psalm 62, 1. Hallelujah. 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 So waiting on God is a response that God has placed in the design of all of his creation. From the creation of Adam and Eve and for all creation, God has designed waiting on him to be a key component of how we relate to him. 
Many people, because God has gifted us with gifts, he's gifted us with intellect, he's gifted us with talents, he's gifted us with technology. A lot of times we replace him with the things that he gifted us with. But the creator is not to be substituted for the gifts that he's given. He has truly gifted the, 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 the nations of the earth, some more than others. But a people who find that God is the source of their salvation, no matter where they are, they will begin to ascend above. Whether you're in Africa, Asia, India, no matter where you are on the planet, when God becomes the source of your salvation, you will find him and you will find your salvation. So Psalms 104, 24 to 29 shows us how God in creation set up a system for creation to wait on him. It says, O oh Lord, how many and varied are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches and your creatures. There is the sea great and broad in which are swarms without number, creatures both small and great. There are the ships of the sea sail and Leviathan, the sea monster, which you have formed to play there. They all wait for you. They all wait for you to give them their food in its appointed season. You give it to them, they gather it up, you open your hand, they are filled and satisfied with good things. You hide your face, they are dismayed. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. Now, if God has created a system of waiting for even the creation, how much more for man? And you can see it in this, that if God were to hide his face from us, we would be dismayed. If he were to take away our breath, we would die and return to the dust. That is how dependent we are on God. No matter how much we think we have, no matter how many degrees we have, no matter how much many achievements we have made, there is still a dependency upon God. Even when men store up things, you know, the, the scripture talks about the man who has all these things in his storehouse, but he doesn't know that his soul is required of him that night because God alone is the one who controls our life, no matter how sophisticated we get, no matter how much we harvest organs and, and try to extend our lives, it's ultimately God who controls our breath. So Andrew Murray who is a, a, a old Scottish, uh, I believe he's Scottish. He, he is a theologian and a person who really practiced the presence of God. He's a prolific writer and he talks about waiting on God. He has many books about it, but he says what the universe and the animal creation do unconsciously God's people are to do intelligently and voluntarily. So creation is a picture. God shows us many of his handiworks in creation. He says even they, they speak, they have a breath. His creation has a breath that speaks so much. And that even if you don't know God, through his creation, you should get an impression of him because they, they, they speak of a, of a God, of an uh, intelligent designer. They used to have intelligent design and then they kind of quashed that. But there is somebody greater than us who created us and who is watching over us, who holds the world by the word of his power. And so we have to make a choice to wait on him, not think we can do everything in our own strength and not just go to him when we give him a list 
of things. We, we go into prayer and we submit him our agenda. But do we ever ask God, what is your agenda? What do you want me to do for you? Because you created me to give you glory. So if there's something that you want me to do, how will I know it except I wait on him to hear what he is saying? So Psalm 62, which I have quoted, says, for God alone, my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. It is a journey of dependence upon God. God created us to be dependent upon him. If we go to Adam and Eve, where he used to have the conferences and the communications with him in the cool of the day, it was his desire to have uh, a communion with them, fellowship with him. God never just created man and said, go. No, he created man and said, come so that he could dialogue with man and share his secrets of governance. That's why we have a crazy government because man has not known or acquired from God the secret to governance that brings about peace, that brings about stability, that brings about good. We have a government that follows the world system which then acquires wealth, greed, covetousness, uh, instability, debt. But there's a better way. And we could find it if men and women would take the time to wait on God and to begin to seek his face for wisdom. Because all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are found in Christ Jesus. We can access them. People read that and say, okay, they're all in him, but how do I access them? Through prayer and waiting on him through the Holy Spirit, because it's the Holy Spirit who takes from Jesus and gives to us. So it is a journey of dependence upon God. God asks us to yield to him. That is the first thing. If we're not willing to submit to him, if we're not willing to yield to him, we will never receive that kind of access with him. He asked us to give him consent. We consent to do his will, not my will, your will be done. And then we wait on him. We take time to say, God, I've worshiped you. I've come in your presence. Now I want to hear what you have to say. And in meditation and stillness, we learn from his spirit. When we quiet ourselves, it's not just about give me this, I need this, my baby needs this, my husband needs this, my wife needs that, I need school fees, I need this. It's not about that. Do we not know that God knows everything that we have need of even before we ask? And there could be many ways that we set before God and we ask God to bless it. But God says, nope, that's not even the right way. God doesn't bless mess. God doesn't bless your disaster and your destruction. And so many people are angry with him for not blessing something they wanted. But if you are a good father, a good father is not going to give his child something that is going to harm him. And that is one of the things that we as Christians have to, or believers, I'm not going to say Christians, as believers of Christ Jesus, need to know that God loves us far greater than we even love him. And so God in his mercy in his grace begins to sometimes cause us to wait for things. There are things that some of us have wanted and we get angry with God. You haven't given it to us, but God knows whether you're really ready for the thing. Many times we're not even ready for what God, uh, for what we're asking God. And God sees all the way through to the future, knows that you're not equipped to handle what is around the corner. And we're angry with him, but he's saying, I'm not gonna put my child in danger until you have built capacity to be ready for what is gonna confront you. 
And so we've got to trust him. We've got to trust him for his timing. We got to trust him because what he wants for us is always the best, whether it looks the best to us. Because we see him through the eyes of carnality. He sees us through the eyes of the spirit. And when God gives, he gives from the eyes of the spirit. And so we've got to begin to learn that God is spirit and them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is spirit. When we worship him, we worship him in spirit and truth. God does not bless, bless flesh. No matter how much we want him to, even like when it's with a husband, oh God, he's fine. I really want him. God not looking at fine. God looking at his heart. God looking at his attitude toward him. God looking at whether he will be someone who abuses you. But you looking at fine. And when God you get mad with him, but then go ahead and do what you do. And then later on, when all that stuff starts to come to fruition, then you're like, oh, I should have listened to God. Well, we all should. When God is speaking, we really need to listen to him. So waiting on God in prayer means that we deliberately set aside time during our prayers to hear from him because we've already told him what we want. Now we need to hear what he has to say. And sometimes what God speaks to you in your prayer may not even be about you at all. This is just like um, August 15th, I believe was the day when I was in prayer. I went still. I went into the silent mode and God gave me a prophecy for the nation of Nigeria. Now, do you think I was thinking that that was getting ready to happen? I wasn't. I just went to God and I said, God, I want to hear from you. And he says, hey, I have a daughter who's going there. She's open to me. She's open to hear what I want to say. And I'm going to release what I want for that nation to her. And then he orchestrated it for it to be released. So we have got to know that God knows what he's doing. When I think of God and his wisdom we have the smartest father we have the wisest father he cannot be beat on wisdom wisdom was with him when he created the earth wisdom was with him when he created the world but think about that he put all that wisdom in jesus christ who was also present when the world was created and we have access to that wisdom if we will just be still and let him download it in us. And God wants us to come back to that practice. We've, we've gone away, especially the Church of America. We've, we've, we've put so much in AI and all of these things. AI has already rewritten the Bible and taken Jesus out of it. AI. It's a good thing. I'm not uh, criticizing AI, but we've got to be shrewder than AI, smarter than AI. We've got to have the technologies that come from the spirit of God. And our discernment has to be so clear and crisp that when we hear something that is not of truth, we will know it. And that is why Apostle, um, Apostle Francis teaching on the construct of truth. Truth is a construct. It's an operating system. It's not just one fact. It's a total mode of operation and the kingdom of God runs on the construct of truth. You don't see any darkness in the kingdom of God. You don't see any falsehood in the kingdom of God because truth is a construct and truth is in the person of Jesus Christ in the spirit of the Holy Spirit. Both of them represent truth and God is the only true and living God. So truth permeates the entire kingdom of God. And so when we wait on God, what do we access? Truth, whether we want to hear it or not. 
Because a lot of times we don't want to hear truth. You know, we all know that clip from, from the movie, you can't handle the truth. Well, that's true for God's people. When he's speaking to us, sometimes we can't handle the truth. We just want what we want. But we've got to get our heart in a position, in a posture to want truth. Because the kingdom is founded upon the construct of truth. So we don't want to just do, just drop off prayer requests to God and go about our way. God is relational. Communion with him is required in true prayer. The Holy Spirit will always dialogue with us. The Holy Spirit takes from Jesus and gives to us. That's what the scripture says. We need to read John uh, 15 here and, and, and learn about what the Holy Spirit is, what he does. He takes from Jesus and he gives to us. And since the Father and the Son are already one, when we receive from Jesus, we receive from the Father as well. Because the three all operate together in unity. There is no, you can't say, well, God told me this, but the Holy Spirit told me something else. Not true. They all walk, work in unity. So if we're not willing to position ourselves to hear God, how can we posture ourselves to obey him? And this is key because God said, if you love me, you will obey me. If you love me, you will obey me. But how can you obey him if you don't go to him to hear what he is saying? And God just wants us to begin to do that again. And some of this is a repeat of um, the intro last week, but we did not um, video. We did not do a video of the intro, so I'm repeating a little bit of it. So when we wait on God, sometimes He speaks, sometimes He does not. Now I know that there are prophets who say this is not true, but the reason why I say that sometimes He does not speak is because I give God the right to be sovereign. He's a sovereign God, so if He says I'm not speaking. He can always choose not to speak. Just like we can choose not to speak, God can choose not to speak. Sometimes he speaks and we do not hear him. And this is to be the, the challenge. Many times God is speaking, but we don't hear him because we're looking for him a certain way. He's got to come down this street when he's already a mile away. We've got to really open our hearts to say, Father, however you want to convey truth to me, I receive it. Just allow the Holy Spirit to alert me to it. But we cannot command God, you got to speak to me this way. You got to do it by this time. And if you don't speak to me by this time, I'm out of here. You're out of here to where? Because <laughs> you don't have knowledge. You still don't know. So you're just going blind. So we need to, to cut the temper tantrums and go into maturity. Because God, we don't command God. God is sovereign. He is a king. And we need to submit ourselves to the king who loves us. And he will speak to us in the way in which he wants to speak and when he wants to speak and how he wants to speak. So when we wait on God, hearing is not the only benefit that we get. The process of knowing him and communing with him are through the Holy Spirit. Every time we sit in the presence of God, there's a richness we acquire because he deposits in our spirit. And anytime you interface with the Holy One, some of his glory rubs off on us. You cannot lose. We cannot lose. People say, ah, why are you sitting there all that time? And you're not getting none. Oh, brother, I'm getting something. And it will rise up in me on the day that I need it when holy boldness comes up to a situation that I may not have thought of. God is always preparing us. When we yield to him, when we submit to him, we never lose. Amen. We always gain by being in his presence. 
always, even if he doesn't speak anything, the virtue of just being in his presence, feeling this presence, just gaining from his holiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So waiting on God should be incorporated in all our prayers. It should always be incorporated into our prayers when we specifically are waiting for an answer for him to a specific prayer. So it's okay to give God a specific prayer, but we still got to wait on him for the answer. Don't say, oh God, I need the answer. Oh, I need this answer in five minutes. Don't order God. So you want your lack of preparedness and going to him to put a demand on him to do something. If we practice the presence of God all the time, the Holy Spirit will be answering us Amen. all the time. Amen. So waiting on God means having faith in his sovereignty and plan for our lives. We set aside our desires and our timelines. We trust him that his timing is perfect. And this is where a lot of people miss it, that we don't think God's timing is perfect. We want it now. And we've got to wait on God. If he says now is not the right time, we need to trust him that now is not the right time. His timing is perfect. We need to exercise patience and perseverance. We need to treasure the reward of a deeper relationship with God. We are in a season where a little dab will not do you. We need to be hearing God on a large scale for everything that's going on in our lives, in our community, in our jobs. We need to be hearing him. And we need to be sensitive enough when he wants to speak through us to someone else. This is something that happened to Francis and I on yesterday. We um, went out to eat. And we were just led to go to a little lake that we used to go to just to drive by because it was so pretty yesterday. And so we saw a couple there with a cute little dog named Sugar, his little chihuahua. And we sat down and the, and the guy was very friendly. We can't be religious in our approach. He had tattoos. But his spirit man was so tender. And he was, you could just tell us something about this guy. He was just really, really, it just was something different about him. So Francis and I sat down on a bench for a minute. And I said, Francis, I believe the Lord wants me to pray for him, which is not something I do a lot in public. He said, he said, really? And I said, yeah, I really believe the Lord wants me to pray for this young man. I, I just see him struggling. And I see the Lord wanting to release him and give him hope. And Francis is still saying, really? So I just, I just stood up and I walked over to him. I said, the only thing he can do is say no. And so I said, uh, young man, would you mind me praying for you? I said, you're really on the heart of God and I really want to pray for you. And he said, yes. So we began to, I began to pray and prophesy to him. And it was so interesting. The Lord used catchphrases that he knew it was God because he knew that's how he spoke. And then Fred said, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pray for his wife. You gotta pray for his wife. Now I was hedging because I wasn't hearing. So I was just building up capacity. I'm like, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to say to her? You know, I hear some general things, but I don't think that's what you want me to say to her. So I waited. And so finally, I said, okay, I'm ready now to uh, prophesy to you. And the first thing that came out was, you need to forgive your mother. And she was like taken aback. I mean, she was like saying, Oh my God. And he said, Oh my God, too, because her and her mother had just had a big argument that day. And so we 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 pray for them, we bless them, and we just it just we know that God has plans for them. And so we need to be sensitive to hear the voice of the Lord 
when we're in prayer and even when we're outside in public, because there may be somebody who needs to hear the word of the Lord to encourage him. He was so encouraged. He just said, this really encourages me. This gives me so much hope. And God wants us to give hope to people on your job. In the, it, it, you could be in the supermarket. You might hear the Lord say, just, just pray and bless that person. Sometimes they'll receive you, sometimes they won't. Even when they don't, you could just say, you could pray, Lord, I bless this person. I pray your blessings upon them. Even if they don't receive it, it's better if they receive it, but you still can pray for them if they don't. God is going to use us, everybody, not just major prophets, not just mega pastors. God is going to use everybody who has a heart to serve him in this time. There is no big I, little use. God needs his work to go forth, and he is going to be using everybody. He's equipping his, his believers with a prophetic spirit so that we can speak what God is saying to others, those who may not be. And that's interesting about the young man. He says, I have premonitions. I have intuitions because God is calling him to the prophetic, and I know it. And he's going to woo him into his house soon. But sometimes love has to come first. And then God does the lure. But we've got to be ready. That shocked me. I must honestly, I was like shocked. Even Francis was shocked. He's like, you don't usually do that. I'm like, I know I don't. And, and so, but it was God's heart. We've got to be, be willing to get out of self to glorify God, because God was glorified. That young man was encouraged, and I was so happy that I yielded. Yieldedness is one of the keys. We got to be yielded, and we just got to treasure our relationship with him, knowing that God will use us at any given time. We need to accept the peace and fulfillment that comes from aligning our will with his, not our will, but your will be done, Father God. And we did this last week, but we did it at the beginning this time, so we're not going to do it again. But Father, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you for this new series, God. We want to thank you for teaching us to wait on you. We want to teach, we want to thank you for teaching us to yield ourselves to others to wait on you in prayer because there are people you may want to bless. There are nations that you may want to bless. There are families that you may want to bless. We have to hear your instructions in order to obey you. And so, Father, we pray that, Lord, we will begin to add waiting to our prayer, that even after we've set our petition before you, we would set aside time just to be still and to know that you are God and to hear your voice through the Holy Spirit. We pray, God, that you would make our our sensitivities so attuned to your movement that we will become so sensitized to the moving of the Holy Spirit that we will yield when we feel the moving of the Holy Spirit that we would be the ones who would be the blessors in this day. God, we pray that your spirit would just dwell in us, among us, and just rise up God so that the light of God will shine in a dying world. We want your light to shine, God. And as we wait on you, you will equip us, God. You will equip us. You'll energize us. You'll strengthen us. You'll strengthen us with might by your spirit in our inner man so that Christ can dwell in our hearts by faith so we can be rooted and grounded in love so that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. There's a world waiting, but the only way we are equipped is when we wait on you. 
Lord, teach us to wait on you. Just like creation waits on you, we will do it willing and voluntarily. We'll do it intelligently, Lord. We will wait on you and hear your voice. And as we wait on you, your voice will become stronger and more identifiable to us, God. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, God. In Jesus' name, amen.